I've been writing the veteran links for the past two weeks and it had happily dealt with the worst of what the winter dish out, sub zero conditions, icy roads, and my worst enemy, salt. But there is something important that I have failed to cover in my previous review. For an electric unicycle equipped with a suspension, surprisingly, I have spoke very little about how well its suspension performed in my review. As a matter of fact, I didn't even bother to ride down a single set of stairs, which is just straight up laziness if you ask me. Well, it's a little bit anticlimactic, maybe. <laughs> Unfortunately, or fortunately, electric unicycle suspension has gotten so good that riding down a set of long stairs is no longer the challenge that it once was. But what about off-road trail ride? Can the 151 volt veteran Lynx tackle a black diamond mountain bike trail? More importantly, carrying this inexperienced off-road new through it all. How hard could it be? This week, Veteran Links, the trial by dirt. Roll the intro. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and help spread the uni gospel. Check out my shop, themosfet.com, for awesome EUC accessory and merch. There are just one problem. We're in downtown New York City in the middle of winter, so there ain't exactly a whole lot of black diamond off-road trails in the area. However, I do have some ideas of how to fix that. But we're not going to ride the links up to the spot. Instead, we're going to take this. I know this probably requires a little bit of explanation. You see, I have this rare psychological disorder where I am allergic to riding on any vehicles with an even number of wheels. It's a rare and unfortunate malady that I had to live with all my life. Oh, I also managed to convince all my college roommates that I'm allergic to pizzas because of its round shape. <laughs> Probably need to add a few more straps to that. So this is the Piaggio MP3 500, a reverse track that in 2029 was supposed to be the future. But 14 years later, I think I'm actually one of the very few riders in the US still actually riding this. Motor? Motorcycle? I don't know what to call it. The veteran patent was an excellent off-road trail and the reason why is that like most other smaller diameter electric unicycle they offer a greater amount of torque as compared to their larger cousins and when it comes to off-road trail rides you really need as much torque as you can get since dirt trail by their very nature tend to have a lot of up and downs but smaller diameter wheels also proportionally have greater difficulties with uneven terrain due to geometry and smaller contact patch. This is why mountain bike typically runs 27 to 29 inch wheels and as a result, trails generally are designed for vehicle with tire that size, which means that electric unicycle with larger wheels should be better if it weren't for the fact that they often have lower torque output. And I tested this theory out some time ago when I took my Monster V3 a 22 inch tire equipped electric unicycle off road and it indeed performed well as long as I was rolling downhill that is. But uphill was an entirely different experience and I had to spend a lot of time pushing it up. I don't know what's going on but there seems to be a lot of activity in the city today. There's just traffic jam everywhere and there is a helicopter that just flew overhead. And although no electric unicycle currently comes with tires that large, at least I think the 18-inch EUCs will have a slightly easier time as compared to the 16, as long as they have the same amount of torque output. So we're heading up to Westchester to visit Spring Ridge Park, and some of you may remember that I had 
made this trip before on the patent and the reason why I'm riding the scooter up this time is that the ride there and back used up a big chunk of the battery so I had to nurse the wheel and stay slow the entire ride which is tiring and not exciting so I am going to skip past that bar and straight to the good stuff. I did leave a little bit too late in the day and by the time I arrived at the park it was already 2 p.m. Not ideal but at least with this being the middle of winter I'll probably get the place to myself. Which is where the veteran links come in. Can the most powerful electric unicycle on the market currently help a complete noob like me tackle a black diamond trail? Let's find out. So I do have to say that the condition is not optimal. It's been cold and very rainy for the past week. And much of the trails are muddy and covered with leaves which make judging surface and picking line harder to do. The Spring Ridge trails are known for their rocky surfaces, steep climb and drops, all of which make riding an electric unicycle trickier but it is also why I prefer coming here as compared to Cunningham Park in Queens which is generally flatter and more dirt and jump oriented. The one challenge electric unicycle have is that the pedal is kind of on the low side. On a mountain bike you can kind of even out your pedal. And also they're further back from the wheels. You can kind of roll over and then nudge your way through. With situation like that, is my pedal going to get clipped there? And also there is a very steep drop on that side. Let's see how we do. I continue to climb and even with 150 volt and 3200 watt powering the links, you can still hear the motor starting to grind against the effort of pushing up against the steep slope with rocks and root making it worse. Alright, I think this is one of the Black Diamond Trail. <laughs> You have to ride up this ridge. A perfect example of the tougher spots in Spring Ridge. A treacherous climb up to an uneven narrow trail with a cliff on the side to keep you on your toes. There's a steep and very rocky drop on the other side. Oh, that didn't quite work out. Slip on the mud. Let's try that again. Well, a little bit further this time. The uneven rock surface kept twisting and turning the wheel causing me to lose balance. Very tricky. Alright, just at the very beginning of the Black Diamond Trail and I'm already failing miserably. Possible, but take a good bit more skill than I have. So I'm gonna cheat and roll over this bar and see if I can ride the rest. I think I can do this bar. Can't afford to make any mistake because Steve drop off on both ends. It's like riding a lumpy and uneven balancing beam. But you're about to be disappointed if you're expecting a nice dismount. I don't think I can <laughs> do this bar either. It's just a drop, drop, drop. Holy shit. As steep as a set of staircase. All right, I'm gonna skip that first two drop. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ, I don't think we can do this. <laughs> Look at this shit. <laughs> yeah, I was planning to try to ride down this hill. <laughs> no, this is probably a pretty bad idea <laughs> this is so deep just walking down this trail is difficult Piles of dried leaves make it extra tough 
since it's hard to get a read on the exact terrain or where all the rocks are, or even just finding where the trail is supposed to go. Oh my god, that was pretty crazy. Don't know if you can tell, but that was a pretty steep ridge I got over. The thing that always kind of scares me is the thought that one of the pedal would get caught by a rock. If that happens, especially on a cliff side, it's gonna spin me and probably dump me straight down the cliff where my sorry unskilled ass belongs. <laughs> Now that we're back on a blue trail, things get slightly easier, but this being Spring Ridge, there's still plenty of rocks and mud holes to trip you up. But I'm starting to enjoy the ride more and feel a bit more comfortable. Oops, spoke too soon. That was really good. Send bump. Came here on the pattern, wasn't able to do it. Try it like three, four times, so. The trails continue to wind its way uphill and more and more I'm starting to appreciate the combination of larger diameter tire, excellent torque and lighter weight of the veteran Lynx. combination of wet leaves and mud I um, mean the low spot really make this pretty tricky ride <laughs> there's like three Rottweiler and and as soon as I roll by they it's straight for me for running. <laughs> I'm not sure if they're friendly or not, but <laughs> I wasn't about to <laughs> try to find out. <laughs> that was just about perfect. That's where you really need a lot of torque. Steep incline like that. A lot of the older gen wheels, when you take them off road, when you encounter a steep hill like that, they just run out of torque. Okay. I also think I'm actually doing this trail backward. This nice drop here. Be fun this way, this way. Not so much. <laughs> I'm losing daylight, so I wanted to see as much of this trail as I, as I can before heading back to the parking lot <laughs> and give you the bad news. <laughs> oh, we got all the way out to the parking lot. So that's that. It's about to get completely dark, so I'm gonna head back. I also made the mistake of not having enough time. I came here early afternoon, so I only have about an hour to ride. Definitely not enough. I think I'm gonna have to come back and try this again. The Blue Trail is definitely a sweet spot for at least me and Alex for now. So maybe with more practice, we'll finally be able to conquer the black diamond. So I went home with my tails between my legs and learned a valuable lesson that I should have hired a much more capable stunt double. But despite my failing, did I still manage to convince you of the Lynx off-road prowess? That's what the comment section below is for. Let me hear about your Lynx adventure and if you manage to tackle a black diamond trail on your wheel. <laughs> You know 
what? Once again, I ramble on too long and somehow managed to waste another 20 minutes of your life, but I hope you enjoyed it. Shout out to my supporter on Patreon. Please check out the link in the video description below if you enjoy and like to support my work. And as always, as much as we all love electric unicycle, the only way for us to get better wheel is to grow as a community. So tell your friend, teach him how to ride, and get them hooked. Until the next video, thank you.